Well, it's Sunday afternoon, November 2nd, early in the afternoon. Sun's kind of bright, uh, just getting settled in, getting my camera equipment all set, and kind of doing a pan view of where I'm sitting. Um, not really expecting to see any deer right away because this is a good spot for normally movement later, you know, that last hour and a half of daylight. But I just got going good and here's a, a two and a half year old buck moving in. So I quickly swing my camera arm around and open up my camera and I'm just trying to set up the, uh, the focus and everything. And because it's kind of bright, I'm having trouble uh, seeing real clearly in my viewfinder. So you can see the buck over there. He's feeding on acorns and there's some scrapes down in there that I've built my own mock scrapes. I kind of call it a scrape alley in that little lane that you see out in front of me there. And I'm just kind of dialing in and everything and geez, I, I see this real nice target buck that I've been, been waiting all year to get a chance to see personally up front and close. And he's coming right in. So, uh, you know, I'm kind of stuck there. So I leave my camera and boy, the sun's bright and I got a buck right in front of me. So I'm slowly reaching over to get my bow. And, and anybody who's hunted, you know, knows that this can be kind of an intense situation because the buck that I want to shoot is 10, 12 yards at the farthest. So I'm trying to watch, you know, basically both sets of eyes at one time here. But I managed to grab my bow and uh, get it down in front of me. And I'm just leaving my camera on the arm going where it was, still on record. And this guy comes in there. And uh, I'd been in there about two or three days before checking on my game camera. And you can hear me pull my bow. I, I draw right here thinking, okay, I'm going to get the shot. Geez, he stops with a tree right in front of his vitals. But he's finding acorns, and, and what I had done is some squirrels had dragged a few ears of corn. I've got some corn growing maybe 80 yards away. Right there where my game camera was, and I had some gloves on, I just sort of tossed them off the side of that trail right there, maybe 10 yards, and there's one or two ears right there in front of him. Well, I think between him coming in there and feeding, and me drawing and then having to you know, let my bow back down, and he smells the ear of corn, and you go, oh man, there's a human scent there, and then you hear me draw my bow again, and darn if his vitals aren't covered one more time, well, he smells that one ear of corn, and you can just tell all of a sudden he changes, and I don't know if he caught that other buck kind of looking up my direction, so I shoot right here, and I go, oh man, it's kind of far back, but, uh, I just shot a really, really nice buck, big 10 point, and uh, up and down, perfect, but back a little bit. I'm thinking liver, right at the liver and diaphragm, so gosh, it's kind of too bad. I'm not sure if I hit a stick or just what happened, but uh, punched him pretty good, and uh, I'm sure I'm going to find this deer, but I'm thinking thinking what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait till tomorrow morning, more than likely. I'm going to stay here till dark, um, find the arrow, check it out, and then uh, probably come back in the morning. I'm pretty geeked right now because it was just my instinct to get in the stand. And uh, this is a spot that I've um, seen many a nice buck. I've killed a couple real good ones here before. So stay tuned. It's going to be a, uh, it's going to be a tough time. Okay, I got an update. I just happened to look over here and probably not, not 50 yards away, I saw him go down. He just stood right the last time and I just happened to catch his, I saw his antlers bobbing and then I saw him kind of go sideways. That's really good, I, I think. This is getting better all the time, so stay tuned and uh, we'll see what I got in the morning or maybe later tonight. Well, it turns out I know quite a bit about this buck. Um, I started getting game camera pictures of him right away in early to mid-April, and even got pictures of him bedding in uh, mid-May. And as his antler growth uh, continued this summer, I got a real kick out of being able to get pictures of him, and even got good pictures of him right into the second week of September. Um, turns out I, 
I took off on a moose hunting trip up in Ontario and didn't get back till mid-October and I thought I'd have you know continued pictures of him but I had kind of lost track of him so I real quick had moved some cameras around and uh, find his pattern sure enough I did get his pattern again even got some good daylight pictures of him the last three four days before I shot him and the rest is kind of history climbed down out of my stand uh, looked for my arrow gosh I found it right away it was covered end to end nice deep red blood so I felt pretty confident here's the area you can see that he ran into that was his bedding area and the area he was going back into after I shot him so I knew at that point he was dead. I did see him fall. My eyes didn't fool me, so I called my good friend Jim Brocker. He had just killed a tremendous buck earlier that morning, and he came over and helped me, and we took a few pictures and video, and then we dragged him up to the barn. We weighed him. Uh, he was 225 live weight. It was just a great way to end a day with both of us killing nice bucks. So I just wanted to let people know, you know, if you've got a small property, work hard on it, improve your habitat, you can be successful. And it's really just that simple. So. Have a safe and successful season, and thanks a lot for watching.